can Blender, a free open source software, really compete with ZBrush, an established standard with a premium price? Sure, everyone can compete, but can Blender not only compete, but excel? Over the last few weeks, I've been exploring Blender's sculpting tools in and out, and I can now say with a straight face, I believe that Blender is a better sculpting tool when it comes to creating likenesses or creating sculptures where shape expression matters more than detail expression. Now, for those of you who already want to reach for the pitchforks, just take the time to hear me out. First of all, let's just agree that there is a hierarchy of importance between different levels of details. In the case of a face, I like to refer to the primary details, or in this case, the primary volumes of the face, as all of the volumes of the face that are created by the influence of the skull. Those are the most important volumes to get right to create a well-structured face. On top of those, then, we add the secondary volumes of the face, which I like to consider to be all of the soft tissues, the fat pads and the muscles that go on top of the skull even if there's some slight anatomical issues with those secondary details, but the shape of the skull has been captured properly, you'll still probably have on your hands a really great sculpt. And then finally, we have those tertiary details, which for me is everything that really doesn't have any kind of impact on volumes, but that does contribute to making a final polished piece, such as skin pores and other high frequency details that we would find on skin. Now, some people argue that there's actually four levels of details, so primary, secondary, tertiary, and then surface details. And I'm not really here to debate that, as long as we simply agree that there are different levels of details and that the major details matter more than the smaller details to creating a well-executed piece, then that's all that really matters in this particular case. I love this concept of primary, secondary, and tertiary because it can actually be applied to everything. If you think of a cake, the primary details of that cake is the batter, is the ingredients, is the basic recipe that makes that cake oh so delicious. The secondary details is the icing that goes on top of that. And the tertiary details of that cake is all the little sprinkles and decoration that you're gonna put on top of that. A 3D model with really bad primary shapes, but on which we have added a lot of tertiary details. Do you know how we call that? We call that a fruit cake. <laughs> Not happening. Nope. All this so far really shouldn't be all that controversial. And I'm not here to argue either that ZBrush is not the better tool when it comes to adding details on top of our delicious shape cake. What I am arguing though, is that Blender is a better tool when it comes to easing the creation of expressive, accurate shapes. So what about Blender's ingredients make them better anyway? Let's shed some light on that. In Blender 3.3, which is currently in beta, but which you can already install and use, there has been significant performance improvements to Eevee, the real-time rendering engine, when we are in sculpt mode. It's possible, therefore, to set up a fully-fledged light rig with great shadows and HDR ambient light when we are in sculpt mode within Blender. And the performance is amazing. Take a look at this. Take a look at how smooth this is. Oh yeah, bring that to mama. Lighting is the single most important thing when it comes to our ability to read and interpret volumes properly. Don't believe me? Have you ever tried sculpting a face with references that only have flat lighting? Good luck making sense of any volumes in there. And how can you be expected to sculpt properly something that you cannot even read? So lighting is everything. All that we are seeing and when we're looking at pictures is the interaction between light and surface. The best references are the ones that have highly contrasted lighting because they really make those volumes pop. And what is true for pictures is true for our 3D models. Great lighting is essential to enable us to properly judge the volumes that we are sculpting. Look at how great Blender's real-time shadows are when it comes to sculpting. Every brush stroke seems to cast a high quality shadow. Compared with Blender, ZBrush only has preview shadows that don't even move properly as we rotate the lights around. Look at the neck crease in this particular case. The light is coming from under, but we still have those preview shadows that are on. How am I supposed to sculpt the zone properly? In Blender, it's really easy to set up a custom turntable with lights that rotate around through the timeline. In fact, we can set up our light rig in such a way that the lights within the scene will follow the orientation of the camera for those who like that. 
and while at the same time being able to control those lights through a turntable so that we can rotate the lights around the center of the scene. I especially want to thank Claire on our Discord server for sharing this great tip. Now, this starts to get a little bit complicated, so I will share through my next YouTube video how to set up a light rig this way. So if you're interested by that, make sure that you are subscribed to Outgang's YouTube channel to be notified next time that I post a Blender video. There's also the fact that ZBrush doesn't really support transparent materials very well. Anyone who sculpted faces in ZBrush knows the dilemma when it comes to eyes. Do you make convex eyes or do you make concave eyes? Convex eyes give proper corneal reflections at the expense of making your character look like they're wearing contact lenses. Concave eyes, on the other hand, allow for those eyes to look a lot more natural, especially from three quarters and from profile. But they ask you to sacrifice those nice corneal reflections that bring so much life to your character. Because we can now use Eevee in Blender 3.3 when we're in sculpt mode, we can have the best of both worlds. We can have our irises be concave and on top of that have a separate transparent mesh to catch some proper corneal reflections. Look at how much of a difference this makes. When it comes to sculpting likenesses, there's really nothing that allows us to read our likenesses better than to have some proper eyes that are set up. By the way, if you're intrigued to see how I have created anything that has been shown within this video, go and check out my character art classes on outgang.studio because I've posted their classes on how to sculpt within Blender, how to sculpt within ZBrush, how to create tertiary details within ZBrush, and soon I will also upload a class on how to create tertiary details within Blender. And there is so, so much more content there that is relevant for you if you are interested in learning character art. So now that we have shined a light on one of Blender's advantages over ZBrush, and we have gazed upon another one, can we now zoom in on another one of Blender's advantages over ZBrush? The camera. These puns are not even in the script for this video. They just keep on coming, don't they? ZBrush's camera has improved throughout the years, but it still isn't a true 3D camera, no matter what they say. ZBrush's perspective only seems to be accurate when an object is centered in the scene. In this case on the left, I have a head that is by itself and centered to be in the middle of the ZBrush scene. On the right, I have the same head that is raised at a normal height so that a character's feet sit on the ground plane. Even though my field of view in both instances is set to 80, only on the left does the perspective seem correct. This is the reason why sometimes you may be working on a head that is attached to a character, and you may be playing around with those field of view settings and they simply do not seem to do anything at all. Blender, by virtue of being a true 3D program, has none of these limitations. The camera just works the way that it is supposed to. All right, but who cares? ZBrush has perspective, right? So as long as we have some perspective, we should be good. Well, not so much. Here are two pictures of Emily Blunt. And you can see that those two pictures have clearly been taken with a different focal length. So it's important that I be able to accurately match the field of view that I can perceive within a picture when I am using it as a reference for sculpting. Have you ever asked yourself the question when sculpting within ZBrush, how much volume am I actually adding under my brush here? Oh, wait. I could really use a second camera that is set up in such a way that I can accurately see the amount of displacement that I am adding on top of my model. Alas, ZBrush is not a true 3D program, so having a second simultaneous point of view on the model as we are sculpting is simply impossible. Blender, on the other hand, allows us to have as many active viewports and cameras with different angles and field of views as we want. Here's a setup where my main viewport has been split in two and the left viewport always follows the right one at 90 degrees. And both the left and right viewports show a different lighting setup. We can also easily take a viewport, split it into four, and for each views, closely match the exact camera angles and field of view values from a particular reference and use those for constant feedback as I am sculpting. And sculpting still feels nice. But why only four, you ask? Why not eight? But why only eight, do you ask? Why not 12? But, but why, why 12, 12, 12, do you ask? ask? Why, why not, not 16? 16?
Surprise, motherfucker. All these features matter because they allow us to better read our volumes and the silhouette of the models that we are working on. Blender has all the basics that you want. Support for high poly counts, subdivisions, dyne topo, remesh, clay brushes, smooth brushes, alpha support, vertex painting, alpha noises. The only thing it is missing is cheesecake, but it does have donuts. It also has confusing hotkeys and a confusing hockey editor. You know, just to keep things exciting, like potholes while driving. Got him! Here we go! Boom! 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 Now, I'm not a Blender sellout. I'll praise one software one day and I'll criticize it the next if I feel that it is legitimate to do so. I simply have an objective interest in finding the right tool for the right job. And it's clear to me that from everything that I have seen so far, that Blender is simply a better sculpting tool when working on models such as faces and likenesses, where shape expression is extremely important and a lot more important than detail expression. Can we imagine a better workflow incorporating both softwares? I can see someone capturing the basic shapes of a model within Blender first, and then afterward throwing it to ZBrush for detailing. Now, obviously, it is possible to create great sculpts and likenesses within ZBrush. Plenty of people already do that. But what I would say is that if you are a ZBrush user, and you feel as if you still have room to improve, and you feel as if you've kind of reached a bit of a plateau while using ZBrush for sculpting, give Blender a try. The features that it has may just be what you need to break through to the next level of mastery. And the best thing of all, you can try it for completely free. So give it a try, unless you're afraid you're gonna like it.